protests continue in France over President Emmanuel Macron's efforts to overhaul the pension system there. Thursday, more than 800,000 people participated in those nationwide demonstrations, shutting down transportation and many schools. Meanwhile, the Institute of Supply Management is reporting that the U.S. manufacturing ind indexes have fallen for the fourth straight month. So join us to explain the potential impact of all of this is Professor of Economics Richard Wolf. Welcome back to the show, Professor. It's great to see you. Oh, great to be back. Absolutely. So let's start with France. I mean, there's this um, there's this uh, protest over pensions. Now, not exactly original for uh, for there to be protests in France, but this is very different than the uh, yellow vest protest that we'd seen earlier. Just give us a little bit of background on this, and, and maybe put it in a global context. Of so this is a, a massive demonstration, I think 800,000 people, in which we're seeing uprisings all over the world around economic policies and austerity. Yeah, I think it's extremely important. I'm glad that you're bringing attention to it. It deserves it. First of all, in France, uh, I know that the New York Times and other uh, media, major media, refer to this as an overhaul. That's a very interesting choice of words. What it is, is a reduction. It's a program to give the French working class less of a retirement program than they had before. Less money, less op fewer options. Uh, you have to be older to qualify. It's a reduction. And the mass of the French people are letting the government know they won't take it. What's really important is that there's a unity this time between the labor movement, the trade unions, virtually all of them, the Yellow Vest movement, very much alive in France. I was in Paris a week ago uh, in order to see for myself. And finally, the students who have their own set of grievances but have put those aside with the Macron government to join. 800,000 people in every major French city. It would be a big mistake to misunderstand that this is part of an accumulating global, as you rightly put it, uh, reaction. It's a little slow in coming, uh, given that the crisis that set all this in motion happened in 2008. But maybe it's one of those cases of history where when it takes a longer time to manifest itself, wow, does it come on strong when it mm -hmm. finally shows up? Yeah. yeah. Well, I sort of feel like, you know, coming out of the financial crisis, everyone was just trying to get their feet back under them. And now as you look around and you say, we lost all these middle class jobs and what we gained were these low wage jobs that even as GDP is increasing and the stock market is high and unemployment is low and all that, we just got a new jobs report out this morning. Even while all that's going on, people in their own personal lives are still struggling paycheck to paycheck to get Bye. Yeah, I think it's important for folks to understand that. Yeah, we have a low unemployment rate, but if you ever take an economics course, your teacher will explain to you, whatever his or her politics, that you look at many statistics, like a doctor looking at an individual, you look at many indices before you make a determination. If unemployment is low, that's good. But if the way you got it low was by shifting from jobs that have good benefits, lots of security, and a chance for promotion to a job in which has none of those things, then that has to be counted and withdrawn, if you like, from the glowing story you tell if you look at only the one statistic that points in a positive direction. And I think you're seeing also here that people have run out of their savings over the last eight or nine years. You know, they can't go on, and so now, Getting through the hard times is so difficult that you're beginning to see the massive pushback, starting with unions striking more than they did before, people in the streets more. And this, yes, it's France. They're ahead of us. They have a revolutionary tradition. But that's all they are, ahead of us, not different. Yep, and, and it's an excellent point. And to that, I mean, we just got the numbers. We got 260,000 jobs were added in November. It surpasses expectations despite a global slump. However, I want to contrast that with something I've been keeping an eye on very closely, which is that the, the U.S. Manufacturing Index has taken a dip for the fourth month in a row. And these are exactly the types of jobs, right, Professor, that provide people the stability and the ability to support a family relative to the creation of a seasonal job at like an Amazon work, at an Amazon factory packing a box. Absolutely, you're, you're replacing permanent jobs with temporary jobs, jobs with lots of supports and benefits. 
are being replaced by jobs that have neither of those things. Mm -hmm. You know, in, in Europe, there's a word to describe it. It's no longer the proletariat, it's the precariat. In other words, everybody's <laughs> job is in the air and you can glorify it with calling it a gig economy or a sharing economy. But the bottom line is it's an insecure economy and that contrasts, and here's the cause for the French, it contrasts with the accumulation of even greater wealth at the top. So it isn't just that we, the masses, are having a hard time, but we're constantly confronted on television, in the films, and everywhere else with a tiny part of the population that is having none of these problems, that is wandering around celebrating a rising stock market, which the mass of people have no benefit from. These are the things that are going to blow our societies apart and it's coming sooner than most people are willing to face. Well, and let's tie yeah. France and America together. I mean, Macron came in, he was really celebrated by the media, this sort of young, good-looking, you know, new face of neoliberalism. How has that gone for him in France, and what lessons can we learn here if we put another neoliberal in as president? I think there's a warning here, and you put your finger exactly on it. Mr. Macron's uh, popularity, and I, I was in Paris a week ago, it, it's, it's right up there, or rather I should say right down there with Mr. Trump's. I mean, this is, this is a fellow who has in a very short time basically lost the support of the mass of people. That's what you're seeing in France today. It's one thing for a union or for a group like the Yellow Vests to call people to come out and show their support. It's another thing to put 800,000 people into the streets of that uh, country. And by the way, this is a general strike. It's open-ended. That is, it's not for one day or two, which is itself different from what the French have done in the past. And it shows a level of discontent. You know, Mr. Macron is a neoliberal, but he's like Americans in the following way. He used to call himself a progressive. He was a no. member of the Socialist Party in France, but he has accommodated to the status quo of our capitalist system. And the result is he is cutting back people's pensions. He is trying to hit them with tax increases. That's what the Yellow Vest started from. So yes, I think this is a shot across the bow, letting people know that you have exhausted the, the tolerance, if you like, of the working class for the, for the crash of 2008, for bailing out the folks at the top, for doing so little for the mass of people as compared to what you did for those who actually brought the crisis on, that this is culminating now around the world. And what you see in France is the forward step that is going to be followed elsewhere. Very Reminds well said, me of a, of a certain young former McKinsey consultant who used to call himself a progressive. <laughs> Professor, exactly. thank you so much. Always great to have your insights. Thanks for talking with us, sir. Great to talk with you as well. Coming up, Vice President Joe Biden's new interview, interview with Axios is something to behold. And in the latest poll of California voters, Senator Bernie Sanders shows strong support with Latino voters, while Elizabeth Warren seems to be doing better with African Americans. That polling, when rising, continues.